My name is Lucy Wangoi. I vied for MCA seat in Mehango Ward, uh, that is in Embakasi East constituency in Nairobi County. I think I'm a frequent user of uh, social media. I have a Twitter account, I have a Facebook account, I have Instagram, and I also have a political page. Uh, during election, my political page was uh, a daily post because of daily activities and I used to share them to my personal account. I didn't post with my personal account, but lately, because not much is happening on my individual account, I use it once in a while. Being a female politician on social media, people view me differently. There are those that embrace the fact that I can go and get and vie for a political seat. There are those people that feel that I'm just there for the sake of being there. And there are those that view me as a role model. And of course, there are those haters who think that um, I'm, I'm just there to be seen. Yeah. I feel like um, I'm one person who writes what they think and what they feel. Because depending on what I want to post, uh, think words just come automatically. If it's a photo that I'm posting, it has come with the right words of the event probably or maybe of something that I want to put across. There are those things that maybe you want to talk to someone who is feeling a bit down uh, depending on the number of questions of people who comes to my inbox. So on social media, most of my posts, I post things that are either affecting me, affecting other people or they feel that affects the community. That is mostly what I do on social media, especially on my uh, political account. I post the happening of my word, but on my personal account, I think I, just, I can just post anything from the food, um, from the activities that I'm doing for the day, uh, from maybe something that I bumped into from another online uh, account. Basically, my social media is diverse depending on the activities that are happening. Cyberbullying is one of the things that has really been affecting most people, especially uh, female politicians or leaders, because people have, I, I think, especially Kenyans, I don't know of other areas because I've not interacted with people from other ventures, but Kenyans have a way of how they handle female politicians because they always associate the success or the interactions of female politicians into sexual, which is one of the things that have really affected a lot of people. Personally, maybe not directly, but I remember during my campaign, there's another institution that carried out my story of where I've come from because I've really come from far and I could see the people writing the, the, the comments. It was because, I, okay, I, I could not reply, but some of the people could really write badly. Like the story was maybe even maybe you've seen it from a waitress to a, one of the leading companies, export companies, that is what I do on individual business. So the people were like, tell her to, to, to tell us how she moved from a waitress to own lorries. Tell her, of course, she's been, tell her the man behind it, how many people has she slept with. It's so bad that someone cannot come from somewhere without being associated with having slept with anyone to be there people don't believe that you can really work too hard towards what you are and what you're doing and i think that is one of the things that is really affecting i know our kenyan's constitution has given us kenyans freedom of speech freedom of expression but i feel that there's been a lot of exploitation especially when it comes to social media, because someone can use pseudo accounts and attack you because they don't want to use their real accounts. And they can really say something. At the end of the day, as much as we're told that politicians should have hard skin, yeah? But I feel like by the time that person is writing, they, they are not writing it to, uh, 
to to just for fun but they are writing to demean you and it's so bad that someone cannot just rise and it's not just on social media even on individual you can see even people who are really even talking bad on your face so i feel it's one of the thing that can be looked at and it's time even for the ladies in politics to also uh, find a way to to measures that the government of the day can really get measures of how people can really interact on social media cyberbullying should not affect you if whatever that person wrote is not directly um positive of what they say because we have a lot of people on social media there are those that know you personally there are those that don't know you and there are those that know you and want to write something behind the skins and hiding like i mentioned about um pseudo account there are those people that really know you and they can use a pseudo account to attack you uh for something they know about you uh, personally it doesn't affect me when someone says something negative actually i take it as a positive thing because at the end of the day you know that thing that that sample uh somebody posted about you i think uh, a lot of people okay some get affected because sometimes it gets so personal and um it can really affect your life but on personal level that is not something that affects me not to post actually i would even go and post again and again to that it can also hurt you you know it, it doesn't affect me at all and it should not affect anyone unless it's on personal affect, um personal attack which uh, lately we've been seeing a lot of personal attack from people that really know you pretending to be your friend and use accounts that are fake yet they know your real uh, life so i feel that for someone to get so personal on social media that is even pers- a person who has these days we are calling it mental health why would i want to go and troll someone that i know online so i feel that um, it should not be personal let no one just attack you and you leave because or delete a post because of someone by the time you're posting that thing you really meant you really knew who your audience are the best thing i think you can just do is just delete that person and block that person they don't need to be in your timeline online gender based violence is one of the thing that has really been affecting us uh, like i started by saying I, i may not know of other countries but i feel like kenya is one of the places if if you even look like especially this thing that is called KOT Kenyans on Twitter can stroll anyone including a president's son and make them <laughs> run and apologize so i feel like especially in the ICT department they can come up with a way to troll them online the first thing i think is to just uh trace the pseudo accounts which are really one of the things that are really affecting the 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 social media uh, platforms especially facebook i don't know whether we have pseudo on <laughs> on twitter i'm not much of a user for twitter but for facebook is one of the places that have been used to affect and to use vulgar languages if if you realize sometimes back when we had our president uhuru kenyatta he even left social media because of how people used to stroll and even talk on his platform. So I feel that yes we have the freedom of expression but we need to get a strategy of how to stroll these people and reduce it and and storm them. These people are Kenyans. The way like when someone um does something with your SIM card or someone does something with your SIM card and they can be traced to where they are. I think also So social media and especially the facebook and the twitter you can stroll and get that person from where they are it's never difficult in kenya if you really want to because we don't have to continue having the same problem over and over again i think it's time for us to take action it's time for us to to change it's time to, for us to as a person as a kenyan politician as a lady to have my freedom to post whatever i feel i want of course not abusive and i also expect good comments even if they are negative let not be abusive let it have a 
a, a comment that will for me i can just take it positively and maybe readjust but not something that i feel i will even want to close my account because of how people are trolling uh, my page in an ideal uh, environment where there is no gender based violence i would post more depending on how i feel and what i want to uh, the message i want to deliver to the people but i also feel that um maybe some of those posts come to strengthen some of us but um it doesn't i it doesn't affect unless you're really affected by what that uh, the other person and the other person strongly knew i don't feel that it would affect my posting i don't feel that it would affect my interaction especially on my personal page when it comes to a political page i feel that um whatever i post is maybe depending on the activities that i'm i'm doing on the ground so whoever strolls me of course definitely is a person maybe supporting the other person so those are things that we can try to work on but on a on a on a platform where we have no gender based violence i think i would feel comfortable to share whatever i feel that i can when there's no gender violence trolling on social media i i feel i would post more and i would be very open to what i post because i feel that um i am posting to people who are like minded or maybe would embrace the idea that i am and i'll have to the confidence to know that no one is trolling me through of what i am going or what i'm posting i would have my freedom as well as the other person who is responding uh, to that